Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, I'm going to try to keep this quick because we have a lot going on in the service. Thanks to our contemporary music team for leading us today. Special word of welcome to all of our family and friends who are joining us for the Bible blessing. We are so grateful you are with us today. Um, a reminder, the schedule is, as you see in the bulletin, a reminder that on Wednesday we have KFC, and at 5.15 we have dinner. And to clarify, that dinner is open to everyone. We'd love for you to join us if you want a night off of cooking or a night where you don't have to eat alone. We would love to have you join us for that. Um, also, um, at 6 o'clock is worship, 6.30 and 7. 6.30 to 7.30 or 8, depending on your schedule, is going to be when we are delivering the farmer meals. And so if someone needs to get back right at 7.30, please let us know. But 6.30 to 7.30 or 8, we'll be um, delivering farmer meals this week. And then also 6.30 is choir. Um, our next every meal delivery is on Thursday at 3.30. We would love some new help, or if you haven't restarted this year, we would love um, to have a little bit more help on those shifts. So please consider that prayerfully as well. Um, a reminder that tonight at 4 o'clock, we have our second session of yoga and scripture, um, second section for uh, this week. And so 4 o'clock, uh, yoga and scripture, and um, I hope you try it out. It's a great way to experience the Bible in a new way. Next Sunday, we have Confirmation Sunday. We are very delighted that we have three confirmands this year, Kylie Mil Milbrath, Ashlyn Schaefer, and Zachary McGacky. And so we are very, very thankful that they are all um, being confirmed with us. Some prayer requests. Uh, Denny Zerke, unfortunately, was taken back to the hospital again, and um, he is not doing great. They are not sure the issues, and so they are going to be spending a lot of time today trying to figure out what the issues exactly are. Also prayers for Nelson Taurus. He broke his arm and had um, surgery yesterday and is generally bummed out and in pain. So um, please uh, pray for Nelson. Also prayers for uh, Kathy Summers continues her cancer treatments this week, and Kathy Kahn is having a heart procedure. And so especially amongst everybody else, we encourage you to keep those people in your prayers. Are there any other announcements? With that, please stand, and we are going to join in Come, Now is the Time to Worship.
Loving Lord, you gave commandments, commandments to your people as a gift. Teach us to be obedient to your word and to care for each other as we do your will. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us open our minds to God's teaching. And consume our ears to God's word. Let us listen to the stories of the faith of our ancestors. And share our stories with our children. We put our trust in God. We worship the one who gives us life. scripture reading comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verses 1 through 21, and chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. Here starts the reading. Moses convened all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and ordinances that I am addressing to you today. You shall learn them and observe them diligently. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. Not with our ancestors did the Lord make this covenant, but with us, who are all of us here alive today. The Lord spoke with you face to face at the mountain, out of the fire. At that time, I was standing between the Lord and you to declare to you the words of the Lord. For you were afraid because of the fire and did not go up the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself 
make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. For the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God commanded you, so that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, neither shall you commit adultery, neither shall you steal, neither shall you bear false witness against your neighbor, neither shall you con covet your neighbor's wife, neither you shall desire your neighbor's house or field or male or female slave or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God and the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Sit in front here. Good morning, everybody. Wow, Brenda wasn't wrong when she said lots of kids this morning. That's so fun. I'm so glad to see you all. Good morning. How are you doing? Do you have rules at home that you have to follow? What are some of the rules at home you have to follow? Abby? Okay, taking care of the dishwasher. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so there's certain words you can't say in your house. You have to get your chores done before you can play with your tablet and before you get to school. Get ready for school, get your book pack packed, all those kinds of things. Any other rules that you might have at home? Homework after you get off the bus, yes, sir. You have to do stuff at school, yes, ma'am. You have to study. What about at school? Do you have rules at school? Yeah, go ahead. Listen to the speaker. Listen to your teacher. No running in the halls. One more, Abby. Don't be noisy. Yeah, you know, I have all of those same rules for my fourth grade class. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. They have to be reminded that Ms. Waldner drives the fourth grade bus in my classroom. 
So sometimes they have to be reminded. Now today, you hear in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses reminding us about the Ten Commandments that they were given when they had um, fled Egypt in slavery. We first hear about the Ten Commandments in the book of Exodus. And Moses had climbed up to the mountain and he was gone for 40 days. And then he came down with the tablets and the Ten Commandments. And these were rules to live by. Why do you suppose we have rules in general? Why do we have rules? School, at home, at home. So you can stay safe, absolutely. Yeah, to stay safe. You know, when you drive, not yet for you guys, but pretty soon, sooner than you think, moms and dads. So we have rules when we drive. So I saw Grayson here earlier and they had to go somewhere else and I was kind of glad because these are his toy cars and I think he'd be a little upset that I'm using them. So anyway, when we're driving, we have rules to follow, right? So this yellow car, look, it's kind of cool. They both are convertibles. And this guy, he's fancy in his red car. He's on his cell phone, and he's just driving away. And then all of a sudden, they're driving. This guy's going this one. They go. <laughs> crash. What? They, they crashed. And it was because people were not following the rules that they crashed. Could people get hurt? Could they have gotten hurt in that car? Yeah, they could have gotten hurt. And they could have had a lot of expenses done to fix their car. Yeah. Yeah, a black eye. Yeah, a black eye. Yeah, sweetheart. Um, because if we're driving, if there was a stop sign, so like he was coming down the road and there mm -hmm. was a stop sign, then he would stop it and do that to be able to pass. And then when the, it comes green light, they all go. Exactly. Green. I know, but unfortunately, you know what happens? A lot of people aren't following the rules. And they don't see the stop sign because they're distracted or they don't know the rules, and so they go anyway. So just like with the rules that we have at home or at school or when we're driving, they're rules that are made to keep us safe and to help us to live good and happy lives. And that's why God gave us the Ten Commandments, so that we have an idea of what we can do and what's going to help to keep us safe and keep us grounded with God. Because Jesus is our foundation. And when we start trying to think we can do it on our own and not have to follow the rules, accidents happen. And we don't want that to happen, do we? So when we're thinking and that rule is unfair, it's not fair. I want to do this. It's not fair. It's not fair. Well, sometimes it isn't fair. Once my son, he had a skateboard, and I told him he needed to wear his helmet and his knee pads and his shoulder and arms and everything, and he came home from the skate park and this huge bump on his head. You know why? He fell. He was doing a fancy trick and he fell, bounced on the concrete. He wasn't following the rules, so he got hurt. So we have the rules that Jesus, uh, that God gave us through Moses, to keep us safe and to remember that by following those rules, it helps to keep Jesus and God in our hearts so that we will have a firm foundation and be able to stay safe and be great examples of what Christians should be. Can we say a quick prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the blessing of each and, one of each and every child that's here today. May I always remember that the commandments are not given to restrict us to keep us from having fun, but to keep us safe and to keep us close to you. I ask that you open our hearts and our minds that we may hear your word and in hearing that we may go and do. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, I know that usually this is the part where you might get a treat, but today is a treat S day because we are also getting Bibles. No, <clears throat> But before you do, I wanted to show you something. Did you see, do you see this Bible? Do you know when I was given this Bible? I was given this Bible by my church when I got confirmed when I was 12 years old. And I use this Bible still. And today, some of you are going to be getting a Bible. And it's something as a gift for the church to you. And I want us to talk a little bit about that, okay? 
So in the Psalm 119, verse 105, there is a verse that says, you are, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So that means that keeping in the word will help us stay in the light. And also from Matthew, Jesus says, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. So we're gonna say a quick blessing for our Bibles, okay? So dear Lord, we thank you for this gift. We thank you for the gift of your word and the many ways that we can use it. We ask that you help us to use your word as we try to navigate through our, our lives in this crazy what mixed up world that we find sometimes. We pray, Lord, that we will be faithful and that we will, as imperfect people, open our hearts and our minds to your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Now, some of you are gonna get a Bible, okay? And I want you to make a promise. Can you do that? What's a promise? Adeline? Okay. You promise you'll do it. And you do your very best to keep that promise. And sometimes things happen in our lives that prevent us from keeping our promises. But today, as you receive your Bible, I want you to promise that when you read it, that you will keep an open mind and that if you have questions about anything in the Bible, that you go and you see an adult. You see Pastor Jeanette, you talk to mom and dad, you talk to grandma and grandpa, any trusted adult that you have questions because you know what? It's our responsibility as families in this church family to help you navigate those waters. Can you say you promise to do that? Let's say that together. I promise. Okay, and to the congregation, do you promise, as these children grow and change and begin their walk with Christ, that you will be there to assist them, to answer their questions, to guide them, and to encourage them? If you do, please, yes, say, say yes, please, say, okay, I can't talk. Say, please, and I will do this by the Lord who will help and guide me. Please. Yes, I will do this with the Lord who will help and guide me. Boy, my words were stuck today. All right. And Brenda is going to give out these Bibles. First question. Oh, kindergarten, third grade, and seventh grade. So if you are not in kindergarten, third grade, or seventh grade, you can go back with your moms and dads. Thank you for coming up today. Thank you. Reading those good Bibles and uh, continue to grow in your faith. We are so blessed today to have a special guest. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Akona. Akona, who is the executive assistant to Bishop Miyaka of the Andini Circuit of South Africa. For those who don't know, that is our partner synod. Um, every synod in the ELCA in the United States has a corresponding partner synod or a couple synods throughout the globe. And so it's a great way for us to build each other up as a global body of Christ. And so um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Akona Klein Boy. I'm from South Africa, the Synod Partner of the American Church. It's the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Southern Africa. It is based at Umpumulo, which is two hours away from Deben. Those are the headquarters. We have 10 circuits, and here you'll call it um, conferences. Ondini is one of the conferences out of the 10 uh, circuits and 100 parishes that we, we, we have in 563 congregations. I serve as the Diocesan Executive Secretary. 
uh, meaning I heard the administration of all these circuits, of all these parishes and all these congregations. I also lead the finances as an acting treasurer for the Synod. So our visit here in South Africa is to build the relationships that have um, been dented by COVID-19 and for me to introduce myself because I am new in the position. Um, I've just been appointed as the first female to lead the church in South Africa. So we are just here visiting all the families, all the churches, having meetings with all the committees of partnership in all um, conferences here. And we've also met with the bishop, with Bishop D as well, Bishop Peterson. We are also heading up to Sioux Falls uh, for the theological conference. That is where our trip will end. We've been here for three weeks. We've been staying in different homes, and we just want to say thank you for opening out your homes to us. And I would just like to thank the Fredericksons for having me for the past two days. It's been a great day. It's been a great eye-opening experience for me to, as a black person, to be welcomed so warmly by the white families here in America. We appreciate that. We just hope that our partnership will carry on and it will sustain and be fruitful. We are here to learn and develop from each other for us to learn from you and for you to learn from us in how we conduct our churches everywhere in the world. We're a global church. We love each other. We want to learn. We've had many visitors from here that have visited us in South Africa, and our doors are open since all the borders are now open that everybody can come through to come and visit. I think it's a matter of just contacting all the partner leaders here in this country to find out uh, which trips are planned. I am going back with five people from here. They are coming to celebrate with us. Uh, we are celebrating 125 years of all the American missionaries that came to open the churches in Sabisa, which is another circuit in Umfolozi. So we have five people that are going back with us. And next year and other years, there'll be more trips. I look forward to meeting a lot of you that I've met along the way in the three weeks. And we are just happy to rebuild these relationships again. Thank you. I know um, Akona and her um, group, her supporters, have been bouncing from church to church to church. Um, and yesterday and today, um, they're having lunch um, later today, and so if you are interested in that, I believe it's probably not too late. So just uh, grab me after church, and we'll talk about arrangements and uh, many prayers for uh, you and your um, circuit, because I know the pandemic hit our South African brothers very, very hard, and the pastors and the leadership um, very, very hard, and you all had to struggle through all of that, and so you continue, you were, and you continue to be in our prayers, and we're so, so thankful for your visit with us, and um, your continued partnership for the sake of the gospel with us. So I'd like to say a prayer um, for you, and um, you are welcome to stay as long as you want, leave when you need to, but we will pray, and then we'll do our litany for Partnership Sunday after that. So um, let us pray. Gracious God, I pray for Kona, I pray for safe travels, I pray for safe travels for all of those who are returning uh, home or to South Africa from our synod. I ask that you would bless and guide our conversations, bless and guide our partnerships, help us to look for ways we can encourage each other, lift each other up, and learn from each other. We ask that you would continually guide us and make your presence known in our midst. In your holy and precious name, amen. Please stand as we continue with a litany for Partnership Sunday. Holy God, you give life and breath to all people. Jesus commissioned his followers to make disciples of all nations. He instructed Peter, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. You call us into your worldwide church that with those of different race and language, different experiences and traditions, men, women, and children, young and old alike, 
we can be in one body walking together to the glory of Christ on earth. Guiding Holy Spirit, inspire Bishop Miyaka to lead the Evangelical Lutheran Church of South Africa with joy and grace. May their churches and ours keep growing, spreading the message of salvation, hope, and love in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Bless the visit of our partners from the Southeast Diocese of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Southern Africa. May we learn from them and they from us as we grow in friendship and in faith. Help, Help us to be what you have called us to be. Amen. Thank you for finding time to be with us. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 12th chapter. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he had answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? And Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, and with all of your soul, and with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. So for those who <coughs> maybe don't know this, um, we have switched to the narrative lectionary this year and we are um, the narrative lectionary follows the Bible in more of a chron chronological path. And so we've been uh, tracing the passages of the Old Testament. So a lot has happened, even though we're going chronologically, a lot has happened since last week's biblical text. In short, we went from near the start of Charlton Heston's The Ten Commandments movie to near the end of the three-plus-hour movie this week. I said this last week, but I encourage you to read the book of Exodus or find a way to review the Moses story, either by the movie or for kids. The Prince of Egypt is a, a wonderful movie. Um, if you have youth in your life that you want to encourage to learn the Bible, which we hope you all do, especially those who just got your Bibles today, I believe that this is the Old Testament story to learn. The images of the Exodus come up again and again throughout the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament alike. So the story builds. The Egyptian king, to review, was ruling over the Israelites cruelly. Though Pharaoh wanted to kill all of the Hebrew baby boys, the brave midwives saved Moses at birth. His mother rescued him by placing him in a basket in the Nile, and when he got older, the Pharaoh's daughter saved him and allowed him to be raised as a prince. Well, one day, Moses saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave and killed him. Later, Moses found out that his secret, being a murderer, was out, and he fled to Midian. There, God revealed that God was the great I Am and called Moses back to Egypt to free the slaves. Well, Moses didn't want to go back to Egypt for the obvious reasons and more, but God promised to provide miracles, a name, the I am, his brother Aaron, to help him. And God did provide. When Pharaoh resisted freeing the slaves, God sent the plagues. Turning water to blood, frogs covered the land, lice and gnats were everywhere, flies and more. And after each plague, <clears throat> the Pharaoh's heart would become hardened, and he would refuse to let the, Egyptians, the, Egy the Israelites go. Finally, God sent the angel of death to kill the firstborn Egyptian sons. He told the Israelites to put the blood of the lamb, so that's where we get the image of Christ being the blood of the lamb, to kill the firstborn Egyptian sons. He told the Israelites to put the blood of the lamb over, or he, he told the Israelites to put the blood of the lamb over their doorposts, and the angel of death passes over their houses. Upon discovering the death of the firstborn Egyptians, including his own son, Pharaoh demands that the Israelites leave. 
And they did so in a hurry. So much so they didn't have time to let their bread rise, which is where we get our thin wafer breads for communion. But then, once again, Pharaoh changed his mind, and he sent the troops after the Israelites. By God's power, Moses parted the sea with his staff, allowing the Israelites to cross over that sea to safety. Then, God caused the waters to come crashing down on the Egyptians once again. When the Israelites thought that they would starve to death in in the desert, God provided them with manna and quail. And then after all of these narrow escapes, all of these miracles, all of that turmoil, right before they finally got to the promised land, God hands them a list of rules. (laughs) The Ten Commandments are actually just some of the rules that God gives them. In the book of Exodus, the rules go on for chapters, covering injury, property, festivals, and a lot more. And it all seems kind of anticlimactic when you put it that way. It reminds me of being a camp counselor. At the start of each week, the counselors would get excited no matter how they really felt and how tired they were. They would hand out candy to cars as they came in. They would help family carry all of their sleeping bags and pillows. They would wave signs of greeting at people. They would cheer for the kids as they came into the cabins. And the kids would get excited when they saw their friends and they started to put their things on their cabin bunks and it would start to feel like home. And then before the week would start, we would go and we would eat pizza together and we'd go over the rules. The kids always looked excited for the pizza and pretty disappointed to realize that they would have to have to listen to a list of rules. They probably thought they were leaving the rules at home. And I got it. It was always a drag to go somewhere on an awesome field trip at school or go on some field trip at church, and you'd have to start the whole trip with a list of rules. But anyone who has led a class, a trip, been a counselor, or pretty much led a group of human beings knows that if you don't start out with the rules, You spend so much more time retroactively cleaning up messes, mending relationships, and more, so that the trip ends up being miserable because you didn't start out with the rules. So it makes sense that once the Israelites were freed from slavery, God started off the situation with rules. You have to remember, the Israelites had never lived in a situation where they actually got to make decisions before, this whole group of people that had traveled. This group of people had always been slaves, and they had always been told what to do and when to do it and how to do it. So God helped them figure out how they were going to live like freed people together by giving them rules. These rules were were not and are not intended to be burdens or punishments, but rather gifts. The rules that God gives us are not because God hates us, but because God loves us. When teaching the Ten Commandments, I often remind youth that the first three commands are about our relationship with God, and that is a gift, because God knows that when we place the great I Am first in our lives, things fall better into place. God knew that the ancient gods of the Middle Eastern world could not and would not provide for them, just as God knows that our gods of success and wealth and fame and power and the like cannot provide for us. Seven commands, though, all deal with our relationships to each other. God wants good things for us and knows that we will be miserable if we don't have guidelines about how we're going to live well together. Okay, I know I've been doling out a lot of homework lately, but I think these texts lend well to that because they require and are worth really digging into. So I encourage you, I think there's some copies in the back, I encourage you to take a copy of Luther's small catechism, the Ten Commandments section. I printed out that. I think it's back there. And there's also some copies by the office and also in the back of your hymnal. I encourage you to take that out and really read it this week. Put the document somewhere where you can read it through a few times this week. I know that many of you back in the day probably had to memorize the the sections for the Ten Commandments. But maybe now you haven't looked at them in a while. 
Well, how are these commandments and Luther's expansions of the commandments helping you to live well in community this week? For instance, you might look at the commandment that says we shall not murder and think, well, I've kept that commandment, check. But Luther explains that commandment as this. We should fear and love God so that we do not harm or hurt our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. Hmm. When you put it that way, all of us have probably broken that commandment. And we are all called to look for ways to live differently. As you do your homework this week, I pray that you find these commandments to be both challenging and comforting. They will challenge you to love God and your neighbor more deeply. They will also hopefully bring you comfort. God loves us so much that God does not leave us to our own devices, hoping that we'll just figure out how to care for each other. But rather, God gives us guidelines so that we will have abundant life. Amen. We continue with Spirit of Gentleness.
please stand as we continue with our affirmation of faith. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You come to us before we come to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. You may be seated. We continue worshiping God with our tithes and offerings. As a part of our Cultivating Generous Congregations program, we continue to lift up a moment in the life of our congregation to remind ourselves what our money makes happen here. And today I want to lift up our yoga and scripture. On Tuesday, I believe we had about 10 people try it out, some members, some non-members. Um, I encourage you, if you're looking for something different, to engage your body and your mind and your spirit to try that out. Um, I, find, I found it a great way to reflect on some passages in a new way. So um, thank you so much to Margaret Vosberg for leading us in that and providing us with that. Um, there is actually a program in the Twin Cities that does that for 400 churches. So I guess it's kind of a upcoming thing, and I'm excited that we have that here. We continue worshiping God with our tithes and offerings. <laughs> eternal God, to whom we turn in every need, receive the gifts we offer, our lives and the symbols of our living, that inspired by your Holy Spirit, we may love you, heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor. In your glory and praise, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord, we pray for members struggling with their health, relationships, or well-being. Bring your healing to them. Sustain and guide those who care for them. Dennis, Kathy Summers, Kathy Crone, Rosie, Glenda, Doris, Val, Pearl, Zach, Gail, Joanne, Linda, Todd, Charlene, Marilyn, Julie, and Denny. God, be with your members in assisted living and care facilities. In this time of difficult staffing situations, provide for them. Surround those who feel lonely or forgotten with your care. We especially remember Mary, Sandra Jones, Roger, Diane, Betty, Joan, Jean, and Sandra Marsh. Lord, we pray for our family members and friends who are struggling near and far. Heal and guide them. We especially remember Megan, Hildy, Stan, Tammy, Mark, Joe, Butch, Josh, Tom, and Brad, our servicemen and women, and Love Inc. Gracious God, we also pray today for Kathy Kahn in particular. We ask that you would be with her in a heart procedure this week, that you would guide all working with her, and that you would help that procedure to go well. We also pray for Denny, we pray for health and healing, and we also ask that you would give him answers for his situation. We pray for Nelson, we ask that you would heal his arm well, we give you thanks for a good surgery. We ask that you would be with him as he's sad and missing out on so many things he loves. We ask that you would surround him with lots of care. Lord, we pray for Kathy, we ask that you would be with her in this week of continued cancer treatments, we ask that you would sustain her, and help those treatments to go well. Lord, we pray for Naomi Muller from the Synod staff. We ask that you would be with her as she continues on hospice. God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our harvest. We ask that you would watch over and keep safe all who are working, prosper the work of their hands. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your unending love and amazing grace, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Go now and listen always for the word of life, word of the Lord. At all times do good and not harm. Save life and do not destroy it. Carry always in your bodies the life and death of Christ. And may God be with you to the end. May Christ Jesus make his life visible in you. And may the Holy Spirit give you the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. We continue with you.